Students often have a lot of trouble with the money multiplier. So let's kind of see how that works. When someone deposits money in the bank, it's used by banks to create money. When you put that $1,000 in the bank, that becomes a liability for the bank. The bank owes that money to you. Because of the Great Depression, the, the Federal Reserve has required that all banks have to keep a required reserve ratio. Let's assume in our example that it's 10%. The, so the bank has to keep 10% of this $1,000 that's deposited, which is $100. We call that the required reserves. The money that's left over is called excess reserves, and that's the money that the bank can loan out. That's how they make money. But how much money could be created if the bank had a $1,000 deposit? We could find out that out by depositing that $900, whoever they loan it to deposits it, we keep 10%, that bank loans out the remainder, the excess reserves, and we could do that over and over again, but that would take a lot of math. So there's a simple way called the money multiplier, and the money multiplier is 1 over the required reserve ratio, which in our example would be 1 over 0.1, which would be 10. 10 time, uh, 10, any dollar that's deposited or any excess reserves can be multiplied 10 times. So in our example, it would be 10 times 900. The bank could create $9,000. Now, there are three reasons why banks wouldn't be able to create this much. One, people hold excess cash and don't redeposit in the bank. Maybe they go on vacation. Two, the bank decides to hold excess reserves. Maybe they have a big withdrawal coming up and they want to hold a little extra. Or three, there's no investment demand. This could be because interest rates are too high or people don't have confidence in the economy or a variety of other reasons. But those are the reasons why the bank would not be able to create cash. Now, if the money that's in the system comes from outside the system, if the money that's deposited has never been in the system before, instead of multiplying the multiplier times the excess reserves, we would multiply the multiplier times the deposit, and that would give us the total amount. Hopefully this clears up some of your questions.